Now, it is an accident that can happen to anyone. We are all at risk, but it is also something that can be prevented. We are talking about a fall. The first place to look when it comes to reducing trip hazards is at your very own home. There's a great program called Safety and Health in Motion that is in place to help with that right here in our own community. We're going to learn more about that today from Chris Kang with Valley Assistance Services and Dustin Schauber, who is with Community Home Repair. Thank you guys so much. I'm so happy we're continuing this conversation today. Thanks for having Thank us, you. Tina. Oh, absolutely. Dustin, let's start with you and let's really kind of talk about what areas of the home do you see are kind of areas where we should be focusing on. I'm a technician who goes in to make repairs and adaptations. Generally, in my experience, I don't have to identify anything. Homeowners are adept at discovering their own trip hazards. Uh, generally, what people point out to me are dilapidated steps leading up to mobile homes, steps that are too shallow for a walker, a rise or run that are too steep for old knees to walk. Sometimes toilets will rock if the floors are starting to fall. Entering a tub is really difficult to bathe if you have to step over that high curb. These are all tripping hazards that can be changed to make the home safer. And I, I did mention at the beginning, we're all going to be in a situation at some point in time where we're going to need to focus on portions of our home, things that could, we're looking at some of these pictures, things that could be hazardous to us. So what does your agency do? What kind of services do you do to eliminate that? Community Home Repair focuses on emergency technical home repair. So if someone's built some steps that go up to their mobile home, but after being outside for years, they've started to fall apart, we've got carpenters on staff and trained volunteers who will go in and pull away the old steps and put some new steps in there. If steps are no longer an option, we can build wheelchair ramps. Uh, in some extreme cases, if someone is really infirm or has just had surgery, we can remove a tub and install a shower with grab bars instead, something that's going to be a lot easier for someone to enter and exit. Absolutely. Now, if somebody wants to, of course, have some of these services or has some as assistance, how do they go about doing that? Good question. Community Home Repair has grant funding and donations set aside for homeowners in the city and in the county. We're looking for folks who have been in their homes for about two years already and have a, an immediate need that must be addressed soon. We're very good at moving swiftly and fast to make sure that we can make sure a house is safe. Right, and that time is of the essence, because mm -hmm. like you said, you know, as more time goes on, there's more risk as, as we continue to leave them in that condition. And so we're also talking about, I said at the very beginning, that there's a program that's also in place. Let's kind of uh, hit on the program and also what services okay. you guys provide. Well, in Green Valley, uh, we have a wonderful partnership with the Green Valley Fire Corps Volunteer Corps, um, the Green Valley Council, and now a new partnership with the University of Arizona. So we actually go into the home of seniors. So we have an RN with the Volunteer Fire Corps. So they are doing the environmental assessment just like CHIRPA does, but then we have nurses that do the medical risk factors in hopes that we can mitigate some of that so that they're, they're improving their balance, they're exercising, they're talking to their physician, but more importantly, they're looking at their home. And sometimes the light is not good in a senior's home, so we will bring out night lights. Um, uh, a lot of falls happen between the, the bathroom and, and at night and, and the bedroom. Um, we're looking at light bulbs to brighten it up so they can see. I've brought a reach stick that we hand this out as part okay. of the grant program uh, so that seniors don't get on step ladders and can use this to reach or even to bend down so they don't fall forward. Yeah. So um, the SHIM program has been in existence since 2011, thanks to a grant funding from Freeport Mac Moran. Uh, they funded us initially and they just uh, gave us another grant to continue with now an evidence-based program that the university has validated and we're hoping to go after additional funding to touch more seniors in the community. Well, I love to hear about this collaboration because it does. It takes everyone to kind of have a different eye, a different view of yes. what we're looking for. Yes, yes. And I know we talked a little bit about the Fire Corps being a part of that. Tell me a little bit more about their assessment. What they do is they have um, a checklist that go into each room. So sometimes we see a lot of stacking. Sometimes we see cords in the, in the aisleways. So they're providing gentle suggestions to the seniors. We're not in there to... to to give them a report yeah. card. We're just trying to make sure that they don't have the trip or the fall. In Green Valley, I think every developer has put a step in the garage, and so it's dark in there, so we actually paint the step a luminous yellow so that they can see that so they don't 
trip as they're bringing in their groceries or items. So it, it just weighs, you know, a fall is $40,000, a hip replacement, no one wants to be in the hospital. Uh, grab bars are, are important. We, we are challenged seniors. It's okay if it's in the home when we want to bring them in sometimes. It's, it's a hard sell, but I say don't grab the towel rack because yeah. it's better to, to grab a grab bar and it will hold your weight for at least five minutes. Yeah. So that's what, we're, that's what we want them to do. We don't want them to fall. Well, how, how do we reach out to, this, to the people that this sure. will help the most, and how do they know that this program is available? We, we are out in the community with outreach events, health fairs, civic organizations, churches. We actually have a fall awareness event uh, mm -hmm. this Thursday. It's National Fall Awareness Day, and we're excited. We have two health plans. We have the U of A. We have local uh, partners that will be there. So folks... Even Tucson folks, come on down to Green Valley. We will have screenings, balance, we will have Tai Chi, we have chair exercise, um, and, and we have some speakers, some physicians, and we have a pharmacist. So you will get a lot of information in, in three hours at Valley Presbyterian Church. I think we have a flyer that I hope you all can put up. Yes. Uh, so good. Absolutely. And, you know, like we said, even before we started this whole conversation, this is something that we don't talk about until it's already happened to us. I'm so right. glad we're getting ahead of this. Yes. We're taking the steps to have this conversation. I'm going to remind everybody how they can get a hold of both of you guys okay. to, to take advantage of all of these uh, resources we were just talking about. So thank you guys for coming. Thanks, thank Tina. You, Tina. Now to learn more, you can call Valley Assistance at 625-5966 or visit valleyassistanceservices.org. The number for community home repair is 745-2055 and chrpaz.org. Stay tuned to The Morning Blend all this week and make sure to log on to pcoa.org slash fall prevention for more details.